Today I'm going to show you guys how we program with variables and some of the ways you can use them in your shop to make your programming safer and more efficient. Let's jump over to the computer and I'll show you how we do it. We're here in everybody's favorite text editor, Simcoe. So I have prepared for you fine folks today some demo programs. This is just a basic program. Here we go. There it is. And you already see variables in there. This is the variable. Anything you see with this pound, hash, whatever you youngins call it these days, pound 510, uh, we got pound 120, and we are just using these as variables. We change it and then we can use these in mathematical statements through the program so we can change it in one place and then the program will do the math for us and make our lives 10 times easier. So this program only has a couple. We're using parts counter in the program. This was from an era when our bar loaders weren't working properly. So we won't worry about that. That's for another video. That's getting too far into the weeds. We have 120 equals 2.125. This is a variable for our overall length. So what we're doing with this is we are using that for our cutoff. You see it again here, G0, Z120 plus 118, which is in this case our cutoff insert width a three millimeter cutoff. So instead of having to do the math ourselves or write out 2.125 plus 118, we can just write variable 120 plus 118. And then you'll see we use that multiple places and we use it mathematical statements and as an absolute value. And that's what's great about variables. You can add to them, you can subtract from them. We'll jump back to the top real quick. Look at this logic statement. If 510 is greater or equal to 59, go to 247. I'm not gonna get into what that means. If you know what that is or what it's doing, shout out to you. But down here at the bottom of the program, we have 510 equals 510 plus one. Every time it runs the program, it adds one to the count. And then that logic statement, that conditional statement, when it is met, it does something else. So, real basic example of how you can use logic statements and variables. I'm not gonna get too far into the weeds. That's gonna be a 75 minute video for another day. So here we have it again. We're on side two. We're on the sub spindle. Let me break this up here. We're on the sub spindle here, side two. We are defining 120 again. We also have here 100 equals 10 which does some interesting things. 120, so that's our overall length, two inches, 125, minus 1.1. So we're using this to set our pickoff approach distance. This is how far over the part it's coming. Overall length of the part, minus 1.1 inches, rather than just setting an absolute value of you know, one inch 25, we're making it do math. It, it's, I realize that just made it sound more complicated, but it makes life easier. So you're not going to see a lot of application here. Where you will see a lot of applications for variables is part families, which is one of the things that Swiss lathes are very good at running, is families of similar parts. And you can use variables in there, so you can have one program and change some variables, and you can run a different part number. You can run your your dash ones, your dash twos, your dash tens, all on the same program, you just redefine whatever variable it might be. So on the screen here, this example program is, a, is an altered version of a part we actually run. It's a family of parts, it's a pin, there's like eight of them, they're all different lengths. The only thing different is the length. The diameters are the same, the whole location from the end of the part is the same. So all we have to do to go from running We'll say this is, we'll say this is part number XYZ-1. So we wanna run part number XYZ-2. All the tooling's the same, the program's the same, except for this length. Maybe the next part is two inches 750 long. All we have to do is change this variable and I will do a slow roll through the program and you'll see we're using these variables all through the program for a lot of our lengths. We have 122. 122 is a whole location from the end. 
so we can adjust this a little bit if we need to move it. Um, I'm not gonna get too far into why we have that set up the way it is because I don't wanna give away too much about the actual part, but we can adjust the whole location with a variable. We change the variable at the top and then the whole program reads that variable and uses that number. You can see 122, 122. Here we're doing some math with variables. Here's our turn length. This is what lets you run different length parts with the same program, just changing a variable. We're using our part length, 120. Pretty common, if you see screen capture of our programs and you got 120, it's usually the overall length of the part. So we've got our overall length minus our head thickness. So we can write this out with actual numbers. And if you're not sure what's going on, I would advise you to do this just until you can get the math straight. 2.75, that's our overall length, minus 100. That's it. That's what those variables represent because that's how we defined them at the top of the program. Got 120 minus 121. If we wrote it out like this, every time we wanted to change the part from the dash one to the dash two to the dash five, we would have to go through the whole program and change all these values. And if you mess one up, your program doesn't work anymore. So it's easier to just change them in one spot and the whole program uses them the same way every time. So here we go again, we got 120 minus 67. If we weren't using a variable, we would have to change this every time we change the part number. You know, 120 minus one, 120 plus 118, excuse me your overall length plus your cutoff thickness, we're just turning past that. There you see it again on your cutoff, overall length. We use that a lot. We use a variable for our overall length a ton because we can just have our program skeleton set up with it and we just tell it how long the part is and it does all the math for us and it does half your programming for you with one shot. And then if you wanna change it, you only have to change it in one spot and you can run the next set of parts. All you have to do is change a variable. You can see over here, maybe we wanna run a part that is a little bit longer. Maybe we wanna run a part with a different angle because this part has an angle on the head, A minus 30 degrees. Maybe we have two parts that are identical except this angle. We could just make this a variable. A525. And then all we have to do is define what 525 is 525 equals negative 30. And then we'll take that value and use it in the program. And then if we want to change it, we can just change it in one spot and it will do all the math for us. So you can make this really complicated and I would highly suggest you notate everything. Notes are critical because you'll come back to it in six months and you'll wonder what moron programmed it and then you'll have to realize that it was you got to have caps lock on. So notate everything and you can use that to just change a value in one spot and then write your program with the variable instead of the absolute number and it'll do the math for you if that makes sense. So those of you that have gotten bored and wandered off are probably noticing this side over here, this third column. This is your machining data. When you go to your MC data page, on your machine, this is what those values are. I don't remember what all of them are, but 814 is your stock diameter. 815 is your positioning point. 817 is your machining length. 822 is your facing distance past center. There's some other things in there that describe the tooling configuration of the machine. I won't worry about that. But what's interesting about variables is that you can use these, these predefined variables in your program. And that's where having flexible programs that are safe really comes into play. Because how many times have you out there, you've been running a job out of one inch material? Hey, we've been running this job out of one inch material, which is what this is. So we have our, our initial facing pass, rapid approach X 1.1. So stock diameter is one inch plus 100 thou, X 1.1, Z zero, and then our facing pass. Well, now we have, uh, we can't get one inch material. All we can get is inch and a quarter. So if you ran this with inch and a quarter material, you're gonna wrap it into the OD of your bar. Not here, but you would at uh, 
You would at some point. Here we go. Where is it? There we go. X1.1 with a Z of one inch 260. So if you're running this with inch and a quarter material, you're gonna wrap it into the OD of that bar. But, but if you have to run bigger material, you're going to tell the machine in MC data, so you can touch off your tools correctly, that we're running inch and a quarter material. So your MC data page is gonna be one inch 250. And you can use this variable 814 in your program as a mathematical statement or an absolute value to account for that. So rather than having it programmed manually, this is for a MITS control, by the way, we don't have to have simple mathematical statements in brackets on a MITS control. Fan of control, everything has to be in brackets, even the variable definition has to be in a bracket on a panic control. MITS control, more powerful, you get more leeway. So instead of having an absolute defined value, we can say 814, we can say our stock diameter plus our position point. That way, if we change stock size, we're not crashing because it's gonna read that from the variable in the background in your variables list, and it's gonna do the math for you. You can use brackets just to be safe. I won't, I'm feeling rebellious today, I won't. Plus, So you can write that statement and it will go to where it has stored these variables from the MC data page and it will do the math for you. Say, oh, 814 equals one inch 250 plus our positioning point, which is 100 thou. So it's going to wrap it to one inch 350. It makes your programs a lot safer and a lot more flexible because you don't have to think about it. You do not have to think about, well, did we run it with 9 sixteenths material last time or did we run it with 5 eighths? Do I have to go back through my whole program and reprogram all my rapid approaches for larger material? Or do I have to waste time, you know, facing down from larger material when we're running smaller? It's much easier, much simpler to do it this way. But wait, there's more. It gets better because one of the things that Simcoe allows you to do is write your own macros. And so I just pulled up a new window, new program. I have written a, I've written a bunch of them, but I have written a macro to generate, auto-generate a program skeleton, a framework for an L32. And I wrote it using variables. This is what pops up. This is where you define all your values in your MC data page. So we'll, we'll go through and we'll, we'll change it up. I've got some default values in here. We'll say, running inch and a 16th stock. Our position point's 100,000, sure. Yep, that's fine. Back spindle length. We're gonna, we're gonna run an extra long extended pickoff. Machining length is fine. Our cutoff endpoint is fine. Okay, so here we go. There again, notate everything. 814, one inch 62. 815, 100 thousandths. Tool ones are, okay, that's our cutoff tool. Cut off RPM, cut off feed. We don't care about that right now. So if we scroll up here to the top, we see a whole bunch of variables. So we got a variable defining our cutoff width. We're running a 5 8 wide cutoff. The actual width of the insert itself is 118. We're running a three millimeter cutoff and we're facing off 15 thousandths every time, you know, when we face off, when we run apart. So it's doing all this math for us. And here you go, 814 plus 50,000. So that's a rapid approach. Whatever stock diameter we're running, it's grabbing that from the variables, you know, from the, the list of variables in the background of the machine, and it's plugging it into this equation. So you don't, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to go and manually change all these X1.062. 1.062. You don't have to go through and put your stock diameter in all these statements. It, it does the math for you. All you have to do is tell it what diameter the stock is. It goes, it grabs it, and it uses it in a mathematical statement. This is probably one of the easiest things and also the most impactful things you can do to minimize crashes because you don't you don't have to worry about fat fingering anything 
you don't have to worry about you know transposing some numbers you know maybe you're 1.602 maybe you you fat finger a number there maybe you go the other way and it's 0.062 you're completely removing that from the equation so i got a little bit excited there at the end but we're going to cut it off here there's a couple of variables and some specific use cases that hopefully you can implement in your shop to streamline your programming process and minimize damage to the machines and your ego because that's all that really matters so hopefully you found that useful uh, like share subscribe if you do good enough on this video they might let me do a full length feature film two and a half hour imax surround sound video going into subroutines and logic statements and looping subroutines and how to use variables and all those fun ways so if that's something you're interested in let us know in the comments and stay tuned for the next video